Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham and today I'm really happy because I am going to be showing you how to sculpt a Korok. So Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is coming really, really soon. Um, I was actually not that excited at first because I thought it was going to be very similar to Breath of the Wild. But after the last couple of trailers that have been dropping, I'm really, really hyped. So I'm definitely going to be getting the game in the early weeks. And uh, yeah, today we're going to make a core here instead of Seabrush. Now, this video is also meant to be a sort of like introduction to Seabrush. A lot of people have been asking me about like what, what could be a good exercise to learn Seabrush if I'm a beginner. This right here is an excellent one, and I'm going to guide you through it. So let's go. I'm going to start right here on the light box, and we're going to select our Dynosphere 100. Actually, let's go to Dynosphere 64, so it's a little bit less low res. And uh, we're going to start with this right here. I normally don't like working with dynamic perspective turn on because it tends to shift the camera a little bit and makes it a little bit difficult to, to understand. Now, one of the most important principles about sculpture is the fact that when we start sculpting, we should focus on the main forms first. A very common beginner mistake is that you guys go and go directly into the details like scratches and wrinkles and stuff like that. No, that's not the way to start a sculpting because a sculpture because as I normally mention, it's like trying to do the decoration for a cake without baking the bread properly, okay? So I'm going to start with my move brush, which the shortcut is V for brush, M for move, and then a V. And in, with this brush, I'm going to start creating like the basic shape. You can see this guy. Uh, I think it's this. I forgot his name, but this is from Wind Waker. Um, oh, what was his name? Wind Waker is one of my favorite games, and I just forgot his name. But we're going to be doing this little guy right here. And I'm going to change his shape to a sort of like teardrop shape. So I'm going to use a big brush right here. I'm going to start pushing the silhouette of the character so that we get this sort of like teardrop shape. And then if things start looking a little bit wonky, don't worry. We're going to just smooth it out. That's why we're using a low res a dynamic sphere because that way when we uh, smooth out things, it's going to be a smoother uh, smoother transition with the, with the overall forms. There we go. Now, by making the brush a little bit smaller, I'm going to start dragging out the little arms that we're going to have. And you can see that we actually don't have the symmetry. Let's go to the front view right here. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to push the little arms out like this. I'm going to push them a little bit more. And then I'm going to, as you can see, they have a, a little bit of a curvature. So I'm going to give them that little curvature right here. Now, see how the topology here gets a little bit like destroyed? This is because when we are pulling and pushing vertices around, we change the topology, which is the organization of the polygons of our element right here. Now, thankfully, we do have Dynamesh turn on. So I can just press Control and drag outside of the little element right here. And it's going to recalculate the element. That's, that's one of the big advantages of Dynamesh. It allows us to, to create something very, very fast without having to worry too much about the topology. Let's start pushing this back a little bit more to, to give it a little bit of a, of a better profile. And then I'm gonna start like softening up. By pressing Shift, we can soften up the uh, the topology. And again, that's gonna give us a, a slightly cleaner result. Now, I always tend to go a little bit more realistic. So I'm gonna add like the knots that you would normally expect from a tree. So I'm gonna add like a like a little wrinkle there. I'm using clay buildup. The shortcut for this one is B, C, B. If you press BCB in like quick succession, you're going to access the uh, clay buildup. And then I'm going to smooth this out. It's going to give me a, a nice like transition there on the on the arms. Now, if I want the arms to be a little bit more separated, we can use another brush, which is the Damien Standard. And it's BDS. By doing this, I can just start pushing this in here and carving in a little bit of the separation from the, from the armpit. There we go. Oh, there we go. So you can imagine eventually when we uh, pose the character, we're going to get a nice result right there. I think the arms are a little bit too long, so I'm going to make them a little bit shorter and smooth them out. There we go. Now we're going to go for the feet. But for the feet, we're going to do a slightly different trick. I'm going to press Control, which is the mask option. And I'm going to mask out the little uh, legs right here on the bottom. And then we're going to press Control and click outside of the object to invert the mask, to switch to what, what was mask and is now on mask and vice versa. And then with W, I'm just going to push these guys down. As you can see, they're really like short, small. So something like this, I think, is going to be more than enough. I'm going to switch my camera around, like move it a little bit to, to get the, the look. And there we go. Definitely think his head is a little bit smaller. So I'm going to use my move brush again to, to play around. And now I definitely need to turn off symmetry. So I'm going to press the letter X to turn off symmetry. And I'm going to push this thing up like this to start creating the, the first horn. Actually... Let's let's kind of like keep going with the with the shape of the head. There we go. And then we're gonna create like the secondary like little element right there. 
Now, if all of this is looking a little bit complicated or you feel like uh, you're not really following along, don't worry. Even though this is a beginner level uh, thing, I know it can be challenging, especially when learning a new software. So uh, we actually have a surprise here. I mean, you've seen the code right here and the announcement right here, but here is the promo. Hey guys, Abraham here with huge news. For the next five days, from April 22 to April 27, you guys are gonna be able to get a 90% discount for any of our courses in Udemy. If you're a beginner level artist and you wanna learn Maya, Cyber, Substance, or any of the softwares that we normally use in the industry, this is the best shot for you. And if you're already an intermediate or advanced student and you wanna improve your portfolio and get to the next level, then we have advanced characters, advanced creatures, advanced environments, and all of the other things that are gonna make you a better artist. All of our courses are recorded real time. We include the files. We have a Q&A and a Discord channel to answer any of your questions. And the discount is gonna be available only for the next five days from April 22 to April 27th. So, what are you waiting for? Get your promo code, go to the link down here, and become a great artist in no time. There we go. So let's keep going with this guy right here. I'm going to control and drag outside again. And now I'm going to jump to my clay buildup again to start like creating the, the thinness that I'm expecting to have on, on these branches right here. I'm going to use my move brush now, smaller and smaller. As we get uh, into more details, you can see that the, the, the size of the brush is going to be a little bit smaller. There we go. Let's clean up the, the silhouette a little bit. There we go. Nice. And of course the feet, you can see that they're a little bit big on the bottom part. So I'm going to use my move brush, move them down. Let's turn on symmetry again so that we're moving both of them. So let's move them down and let's start pushing them close together. So they're a little more like little stumps right there. There we go. Let's move a little bit there with shift. And that's going to clean the, the general look of our, of our tree, tree legs. Perfect. So not bad, we got a nice shape right here. However, I'm gonna start giving it my little uh, touch right here. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the resolution of the Dynamesh a little bit. Right now you can see we're in 64 resolution. By the way, I'm using a, a custom interface, but if you wanna find this, it's gonna be down here in the Dynamesh. And we're gonna increase this to 160 in Dynamesh. This is gonna give us a little bit more detail and that should allow us to create something a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna break symmetry again by pressing X and just play around with this branch. Probably like move it down a little bit. And with clay buildup, I'm gonna start building up the sort of like roughness or like the unevenness of the tree. Cause I, I, I do wanna make it a little bit more realistic. I know this is like tune shaded. I'm gonna do like a, a little bit of a, a more realistic version of the, of the guy. Not perfectly realistic, but just like semi stylized. So I'm gonna start using my clay buildup here to, to create like the, the changes in form that we would expect to have from, from the branches. Then we're gonna smooth all of that out. I don't wanna see any of the brush strokes. They're just there to, to give me change in the volumes. And once we're happy with this, we can move this around. There we go. Now, since we're working with asymmetry, one thing that we could do, for instance, is we can make one arm slightly shorter than the other, or the other one just like move it down a little bit more. I'm even thinking about using train dynamic and maybe like flattening one of the arms a little bit just to give it more of a, of a branch look, you know? And that's one of the beauties about uh, Seabrush, the fact that you can create so many variations very, very quickly. <laughs> it looks like he has a little butt right there. I think it's fine, but I'm gonna use my trim dynamic here to like hit the surface a little bit and see how we're creating a little bit of roughness on the element. Instead of being like super, super soft, it's looking more like chipped wood, right? So this should give us an, an interesting detail along the, the character right here. Same over here. I'm gonna use my move brush again and move it like this. Now, usually when we're working with characters, we don't pose them. But for this particular one, I do wanna have a little pose. So I'm gonna press E to go into rotation mode. I'm gonna rotate him forward like this. And then I'm gonna press this, or I'm gonna use this Y button to move it sideways. So when we see it from the front, it looks like he is like moving forward, similar to what we have here on the concept. We can even like move it a little bit like this. And there we go. Now to give this a little bit more life, of course, I'm gonna use my move brush and I'm gonna move this little guy right here and keep it flat to the ground. And then this little foot, I'm actually gonna kind of like push it up a little bit more. So it really looks like he's uh, stretching uh, his little uh, arm. Same for the for this arm right here. So I'm gonna bring this arm forward and to keep the balance, I'm gonna bring this arm a little bit backwards. This is something that I would probably do for something like 3D printing, for instance, 
when you're 3D printing things, which by the way, we also have a 3D printing course, uh, you don't need to um, to make sure that the character is like perfectly um, symmetrical. You can pose the character and since it's gonna be just like a collectible or something, um, as long as you can print it properly, you shouldn't have any issue. So there we go. Again, smooth out all of those like imperfections that we get from the from the little arm, from the from the clay buildup. Clay buildup, I, I really like the brush, uh, although it's a little bit aggressive. So so that's why we're uh, or we can have a little bit of an issue right there. I'm gonna use clay buildup now to remove a little bit of volume there to to keep it cleaner, cleaner curvature. I'm gonna use the move brush to make sure that when we see the silhouette of the character, it's a very clean silhouette. Silhouette is one of the first things that our brain processes when it sees an image. So keeping a really clean silhouette is fundamental to, to this sort of things. I'm gonna remove a little bit more, more volume from here, separate the two branches from each other. And then again, smooth this out to create a nice transition. Now, remember I mentioned that I wanted, I wanted to make this a little bit more realistic. So I'm gonna create a, a small crack here with the Damien standard brush. We talked about this one earlier. It's BDS is the shortcut. I'm gonna use this to, to create a little cut here. You know how trees sometimes get damaged and after they get damaged, they they regrow uh, and create like scars, right? So it's a little bit of like a scar. And then I'm gonna, again, very softly, I'm using a pen tablet, by the way. Usually when working with Seabrush, you, you wanna use a pen tablet because you're gonna get, or you're gonna have a little bit more control over the pressure of the, of the brush strokes. Um, I'm using one right here. There we go. Now, we can't deny that one of the most like fundamental parts of this little guy right here is the, um, what's the word? It's the, it's the little leaf, right, that it has. So I'm gonna show you a technique right now. I'm gonna go to Subtool, Append, and we're gonna append a cube right here. Now with this cube, I'm gonna push it forward. I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner so that it represents the like the rough thickness that I want for the for the leaf. And I'm gonna use this thing called the select lasso. Now you can find this by pressing control and shift and then changing this to select lasso. And the select lasso is a way to select specific parts of the element. Now, as you can see, when I do this, it's very faceted, right? So we need to give either more divisions to this cube or make it dynamesh. So I'm gonna go geometry. We're gonna say dynamesh to make this cube dynamesh. Now we have a lot more polygons. And now I'm gonna press control, shift, alt. And I'm gonna start hiding certain parts of this thing to create the shape of the of the leaf. It doesn't have to be perfect on this like first pass. Just like a like a general shape. There we go. There we go. There we go. So that that's look that looks okay. I'm gonna say delete hidden, which is gonna delete the hidden parts. Then when we dynamesh again you can see that we're gonna get this. Now, unfortunately, we lost a lot of the of the back press. Actually, here, I'm gonna do this right here. I'm gonna delete, or give me one second. I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna little slash. I, I was gonna save this tool for later, for later, but this one might be uh, better. So I'm gonna use the knife curve. And with the knife curve, I'm pretty much just gonna like cut a couple things like this. It works the exact same way, control shift, and then all of the things that are on the Gary Dint are gonna be cut. So I'm gonna round this off a little bit. And then I'm gonna draw this one and hit double tap or alt to get like this cut right there. And there we go. Now over here, I can press alt and create a curve. And there we go. So now when dynamesh, this is gonna look a little bit better. Now with this done, I can use my move brush again and I can just start like tweaking these things around. I'm gonna use another brush here called the trim dynamic. The shortcut is BTD. And it's one of my favorite brushes because it allows me to, to like smooth out the, uh, the corners of an element. It's kind of like a bevel brush. It's not the bevel brush though. We do have a bevel brush here instead of seabrush. This one's it's, it's similar. It's gonna allow me to, to do this. And then I can start pulling and pushing with my move brush again to get the shape of the of the leaf to be a little bit closer. I'm gonna use again my trim dynamic. And there we go. Just keep pushing this one right here. As you can see, I'm, I'm smoothing the, the lower part of the element right here. And we're gonna be doing this, there we go. This is rounding off all of the corners that we have on our element. We can get a really, really nice effect. Now that we have all of this rounded corners, we can of course use our move brush again to 
to play around with the shape. And uh, this leaf is supposed to have a little bit more uh, thickness to it. Let's push this forward. You can see it's like pushing down a little bit there. And uh, I would expect this to have the, the middle line. So I'm going to use Damien Stander to draw the, like the middle line here on the, on the, on the leaf, which is going to push the whole surface in. That's fine. And we're going to smooth it out. And then all of this flat area right now, I'm going to use my clay buildup to add the volume and give the roundness that we would expect for the, for the leaf. So something like this. There we go. Smooth, 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 smooth. And we start cleaning all of this. It's kind of like a little bit rougher right now. But then what we can do is we can go back to our trim dynamic and use it to flatten out some of those like surfaces. And that's going to give us a, a more interesting effect. Now you can definitely tell that one of the important bits that we're going to have to add are the eyes. That's like a, like a big part of the character. Let's push this forward. I'm going to rotate this a little bit. Get that right here. It's a little bit big, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. We do need to add a little, like, uh, I'm not sure how to call that piece. So let's do it like that. There we go. And let's use my move brush again to, to modify the shape of the leaf a little bit more. I want to make sure it matches a little bit closer. For instance, this, this part right here seems a little bit sharp. So I'm going to keep moving it and just smoothing it a little bit more. There we go. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And now with our clay buildup, I'm going to change the thing to a, a, a round alpha, which changes the tip of the brush. And I'm going to press Alt. And I'm going to create a little like eye right there. And then we have another like small one right up here. And we got the mouth like right around there. This is doing like a like a speed sculpt, by the way, so things might not be perfect. But we want to get like almost there. Get another little cut right here. And then just another one right here. There we go. Not bad. Not bad. Cool. So yeah, we can definitely see that this is a uh, little Macar. I think his name was Macar over here. There we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little bit more resolution so that we can use the Damien standard. And for instance, this guy right here, I'm gonna mark it a little bit more. Same for this one right here. There we go. I'm gonna carve a little bit more. And there we go. Proportion-wise, I like it. However, I do feel like the leaf looks very flat. So I'm going to use my move brush to, to give it a little bit more curvature overall. And just make sure that it flows and moves nicely. There we go. Perfect. Now, one thing we can definitely do is go back to the tree here. And again, to give it start giving it a couple more details. For instance, here on the, on the, on the feet, we can add some wrinkles indicating like the rings that we would expect from the from the wood. Again, I'm going a little bit more realistic than on the on the game. So it's gonna it's gonna definitely tell. I'm definitely gonna be like adding the cuts here underneath the arms. Like some wrinkles or folds to indicate that they're separate pieces or separate elements from the from the main body. And I definitely I, I really like using the clay buildup to add this sort of like like bark effect. As you can see right here, just just like crazy looking lines and then smoothing them out or even using trim dynamic to flatten them out and just giving it a little bit of texture. See that? This one, I actually like to use the, the square alpha. You get a slightly nicer like wood effect. And we can follow like the curvature of the little character right here. There we go. So all of this, this is just a very basic exercise. We go over all of the different tools and I can teach you guys how to do amazing looking characters in our courses. So again, the promo is only available for the next couple of days. Make sure to check the link and uh, I'll be happy to, to teach you even more things through our uh, premium courses. We're still going to have a lot of content here on YouTube. 
But the premium courses are the way we keep going. So if you guys want to support the channel, that's the base way you can do it. Let me just use Train Dynamic here to soften this up again. Just remove some of the elements, a little bit of smooth. And this is just like general texture that I'm adding to the whole character. There we go. Now I'm going to go Damien and Standard again, BDS. And I'm going to add some like bigger like wrinkles or cuts even here on the elements. Maybe we could even like like a like a little knot. You know how how trees have like this like knots. Let's add another one like right here. And then we can use stream dynamic to to blend it in a little bit. Look at that. That looks really good. And one of the best advices that I can give you, my friends, if you've made it all the way till minute 20 of this video, is have fun. Have fun. This is a great exercise. You don't even need to do macar. You can do like your own little like version of uh, of a what's the word? Of a um of a quirk character. Let's add some wrinkles here on the on the leaf. And smooth this out. There we go. Frame dynamic. Just keep cleaning this up a little bit more. I remember on the games, I think this guy used to have like a little instrument. I'm not gonna be able to do the little instrument for for this character right here. But if you if you have the time, go for it. Just add a little instrument and you're gonna have a great render piece. Now I am gonna be taking this into Maya and I'm gonna be rendering it to um to do the thumbnail. But I don't want to. I don't want to add it uh, to this video and make it any longer than it needs to be. So if you guys want me to show you how I did the render for the thumbnail, let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to do like a part two of this little project right here. Also, I'm thinking about 3D printing this little guy. If you guys want to see him 3D print and show, uh, if you want me to show you a little bit of the process on how to prepare the print, let me know, and uh, and we can also do that. We have live streams every single uh, Monday, and sometimes surprise live streams during the week. And we also have our Discord channel. So if you have any question about all of the stuff that we're doing here in the channel or any 3D software, you can ask it right there and I'll be happy to help us along uh, along with a couple of other instructors that we have available as well. Let's just add the final touch, which is going to be the little cylinder. So I'm going to append a uh, sphere cylinder 3D, this one right here. There we go. I'm going to scale this down with R, make it a little bit thicker, and just get it in there. There we go. Let's rotate a little bit. Make it a little bit smaller even. And then with move brush, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a, of a nice shape right here. Let's dynamesh. And I'm gonna use trim dynamic to flatten the, the little part right there. And we can give it a couple of divisions. Now on the, the mouth itself, I'm actually gonna like add a little bit of, a, of extra volume there so that we can insert that nicely into the into the lift. And there we go, my friends. Little macar here is ready. We got a very nice uh, result. Just a couple of minutes. In this case, it was 20 minutes, 23 minutes. So if you guys like this video, please let me know in the channels. And if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, like ZBrush, make sure to check the links below and uh, check either our introduction or complete guide to ZBrush 2022 or any of the courses where we teach environment, characters, or any of the other uh, things, assets, props. There's a little bit of everything and we have over 60 courses available for you, my friends. So yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you very much. Hopefully you guys are as excited as I am about uh, the new Zelda. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.